Welcome to Home Education Matters, the weekly podcast supporting you on your home education journey. Hello and welcome to another episode of Home Education Matters and today I'm joined again by Ash for our series A Journey into Home Education and we are going to be talking about June because I know that May was a bit up and down for you and so I'm interested to hear Ash how your June month has been. Have have you felt that things are settling how are are things feeling increasingly unsettled as you get towards autumn and putting putting your smell back in yeah I think it's been it's been an interesting month in that I think we've found a rhythm again because I think I think like we I think we've talked about this before the the ebbs and flows of of home educating it's a very unnatural um situation I think normally because you know you'd just be continuing with the home educating come come September come whenever it will just continue. I think you'd naturally fall into a, a, a pace that, that was comfortable. However, we've got some anxiety or some some sort of like there's a build up to Ismail going back to, to secondary school in, in September. So from that point of view, there's been a lot of preparation towards that that's been happening. Um, but yeah, I think we have I think from a from a an academic perspective, the things that he was kind of reluctant to do in May, we have settled into more of a, a pattern there as well. Are you finding that you're winding things down, you know, sort of trying to finish things off and or or are you finding that you're uh, you're now with an eye to getting him prepped and ready for September? Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of both. There's definitely the prep work that's going. So um, I'm not sure if I mentioned last time or not. It's was getting quite stressed about. The, so I, I know it's a national thing. I don't know if you're aware of this, Ellen, uh, because your school, your kids have never been to um, mainstream education, have they? But they have transition days where you have. I'm sure you're you're aware when year six is going to year seven, um, for a number of days, two or three days in the in in a week, um, and out actually act like the year seven. So he knew he had that coming up in July. They actually start tomorrow, so he's got three days doing that. But he was getting really anxious is about not knowing where to go just because it's a really big school right so you go from being in a primary school to being home educated to there being a really big school so luckily the school actually called me which I, which I was really happy with because they were offering some extra transition sessions and like in the afternoons an hour in the afternoon that seemed good for his smell because a he's more alert in the afternoon and second of all he um yeah an hour seems kind of manageable rather than going and doing a full day so he's had four sessions where he's been at, at the school already um and it's becoming like used to the the staff and, and the environment so uh, we've been doing a lot of kind of prep and and um i guess yeah, just preparing him for for the for the start of secondary school in September, uh, but additionally, we've kind of, I have kind of taken the whole. Um, you must sit down and do your academic learning and you must do your maths and you must do your English. And I've let him kind of take the lead on that more. And I know that he's more successful when I do that anyway. It's just, I think, I think as a parent, you get, you, you become so pressurized as well. You you have all this, like, I've talked about the weight on your shoulders before as well, where you think I, I need to be leading this. Whereas when he's leading it, he's getting a lot more done. He knows an, a massive amount of things. If I let him just, if I just give him the right environment or the right opportunity to show me what he knows or to, to grow within that so yeah I think there's a, it's a bit of both really yeah a bit of winding down a bit of me accepting that he's going to lead his learning and definitely the prep for September as well. I think that if you two were to carry on home educating or maybe come back to it or whatever I think your natural fit is unschooling. I know it feels like super kind of weird because you I know yeah. you had your color-coded folders and, and you're very <laughs> organized but I think that it sounds to me like Ismail leading autonomously kind of leading his learning just fits really nicely and you being the sort of like fix it facilitator organizer behind the scenes it feels like it's a really good fit for the two of you yeah definitely and I think that this year has provided me that wisdom to be able to actually see that and actually if you think about it it makes complete sense he Ismail does not like being told what to do at all in the schools I think he'll do it but he'll be doing it under pressure um at home he doesn't he likes to be the one who's 
planning things himself, organizing things himself. He's always been quite autonomous in that way. So of course that makes sense. But why didn't I know that back in September when I started it? But I think it takes a while to have that confidence to be able to give him the, the reins and be able to be a facilitator as opposed to, to a leader, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think absolutely that's right. I think it's really difficult to predict with children. I think that it definitely takes time to understand what route will work for them. For example, my one of my children is quite headstrong, quite stubborn. I would assume that unschooling would work for them. Doesn't. Um, they prefer something more directive. And I and for my other one, I would have thought that maybe unschooling. Uh, wouldn't work for them but actually they're very autonomous and I think it's really difficult to predict you can't really predict it from personalities or how they interact with you it's one of those things you don't really know until you start the home education journey I think and uh, and have like boots on the ground for for a good few months I think absolutely and I I think um yeah initially it was like structure he likes structure so he likes to know what he's doing when he's doing it and that was the path that we were following because I felt probably the most comfortable there as well um, but yeah, like I said, the, the confidence you get after doing it for a while and, and seeing things that aren't working, it gives you that time. So you definitely need, um, you know, a, a prolonged period of time within homeschooling to actually find your feet. I feel like it'd be easy. It would have been easy, not easy, but it would be one of the things a few months in when I was like, this isn't working, the, the sit down, the academic bits aren't working and he needs to be back in school. I can see why that I would be, I was fearful and like, it would be quite easy to slot him back in and be like, oh no, you need to go back to school because you know, we're not doing enough. But it takes a while for them to actually come down from the whole the stress of the school system, which I'm now putting him back into and I'm really aware of how ironic this sounds. <laughs> but yeah, to come down from that and then and then to actually find your rhythm. So it just and you have to be patient with it and you have to be um yeah I guess you have to just yeah be patient with it and be brave that's the only thing I can say because that's how I felt I've had to be on numerous occasions yeah I mean you talk about bravery and like sometimes I I think of ourselves as you know on those big old-fashioned ships and there would be somebody right at the front sort of like pointing sort of saying oh I can see an iceberg or I can see an island or whatever and I feel like home educators are that you know we're right at the front of the boat and it's yeah. and we are it, you have to be brave and you are quite exposed I think one thing you were saying there about unschooling and about structure and I think that I just wanted to to say something about that because I think there's a real misrepresentation sometimes of or misunderstanding of unschooling as as being this kind of free for all uh, oh, it's for children who don't like rules or don't like structure or don't, you know, don't want to learn in a traditional way. But actually, from from what I've learned over many years is that if you're unschooled, you can be unschooled and like to only make things out of pottery, like to only watch YouTube videos. But you can also be unschooled and super like timetables, really like learning from textbooks. It's just about whether you as the child like doing that. And there's, I'm sure there's just as many unschooled children who really thrive from structure. They just like to put their own structure in mm -hmm. and then and interact with the learning materials in their own way. And I think that sometimes that even within the home education community, although we are very aware, I think much more aware than the general public about unschooling. But I think I think even within our own community, but definitely wider in the wider community, there's this idea that unschooling means basically not learning or maybe not learning in any kind of way that people recognize. But it's not about that. It's about the child directing their learning. And I think I think actually the word unschooling is quite unhelpful because it yeah. implies at the opposite of schooling and I don't think that's always helpful in this context actually no absolutely I think yes yeah, self-directed learning is probably a more accurate thing to say isn't it so um and I by no means am an expert on schooling at all as I'm just dipping my feet in a little bit anyway um so I think it's something that if we, if Ismail does decide to leave secondary and come back to to being home educated that that would probably be the road that we would go down and it would probably require um a lot of research <laughs> into it and like you know i like to do my research anyway but yeah make sure he's getting the best out of it as well so yeah and we did a really interesting podcast on unschooling oh, almost a, over a year ago now 
And I, di I didn't know much about unschooling. Most of my friends were unschoolers all the way through our home ed journey. But I really didn't know a lot about unschooling because generally you don't really talk about how you do it when you're at home ed meetups. You tend to talk about all sorts of other stuff. You don't really talk about the nitty gritty of how you sort of how you actually home educate. So I didn't know a lot about unschooling either. And um, the unschooling podcast that we did, I found really fascinating because uh, uh, one thing that I really took away from it is that you can... I was assumed that you couldn't really unschool if as a parent you were very kind of slightly controlling and a little bit kind of like needing to have your fingers on everything and needing to sort of control what's going on and being very organized. But actually that turned out not not at all to be the case. And my guest in the unschooling podcast was very much like me, you know, <laughs> she was very much yeah. like, you know, this was quite hard for me to to let go. And And I think that's probably one of the biggest battles actually of unschooling is that you have to throw yourself into this big, deep unknown and trust your child. And that is a scary thing. I'm a hundred percent, especially when you feel so responsible and you feel you, you know, it's not, no one takes, I don't think anyone takes a decision of home educating lightly. They, they think about it and they are very made aware of all the repercussions, especially if you're in talks with the, the local authority where they're, they're asking for the reports and all those sorts of things. And it is kind of like, initially, I remember when I was doing my um, home educating, I was, co I constantly had them in the back of my mind thinking, I need to write this report. I need to make sure the report is showing that he is demonstrating these skills and he's come on since last year etc but since but I that, that report was given in I think October time I think it was something like that and that's kind of like completely thrown out of my head now and I guess if I was continuing with home educating I would be thinking about it maybe coming up to kind of September but I think I'd feel more confident even if I was you know it's more with unschooling I think I'd feel more confident in finding that learning and being able to write about it but um it's definitely stepping outside of your comfort zone and it definitely is um yeah, letting go of some of that control, which I, I do, I struggle with as well, 100% do struggle with. I remember, I remember really distinctly our podcasts around that time last, last autumn. And I remember the first podcast that you came in on, I think it may have been the November one, when you had got the reply back from the local authority saying, yeah, okay, that's fine. And I, I think it was quite a short reply. And you're a bit like, yeah. okay, everything seems <laughs> to be okay. And, and it's funny, because I think people like, people like me who have been doing it a long time I'm under the radar so I've never had to do a report but I've, I've been in the groups a lot and a lot of a lot of us kind of old timey home educators we underplay how significant the report is and how also how significant it is to get a response saying yes that's all okay because I think for us we're like well who cares if they think it's okay or not but actually it's a validation isn't it and I think when you're on your own and you're not really sure it's both a validation of what you're doing but also it's a huge relief because you can I noticed from our podcast together that after that you seemed much more relaxed into it and you and Ismail sort of went your own way a lot more yeah and I think it's maybe part of that was because it was the very first one we had done and also the expectation that it would be done within kind of six weeks of, of like it was completed within four four to six weeks of him starting his home educating journey so I think that's quite unreasonable given that teacher that my report was very much detailed much more than you'd get for us you know like the, the legal document you get at school from a teacher who being a teacher having been a teacher myself you know how much you have to kind of recycle things and kind of like adapt things and it's also very it's normally a very general kind of report that you give to students and um, so I know mine was very much more in depth and just getting it would have been nice to have oh it sounds like he's having a really exciting time this year and you know you want a thumbs up from them don't you but yeah I think you have to learn that you they're not the people that are necessarily going to be giving you that um but you just need to make sure from a legal point of view you're doing your your, your duty there and um, so I think I'd be probably a bit more relaxed about doing the report in the, the following year so the next autumn time I think I would be I say that but let's you know we, it would, you'd have to probably be in that situation to know whether you would be um or not but yeah I think I think you would be I think you would be more relaxed and more confident in your approach because what you've done it was very it was very close to the start you know Absolutely. it was unreasonably close to when you started home educating but now you're able to really understand all the ways that Ismail is learning things so I think you'd be much more confident about saying actually he's learned all of this and all of this and all of this without having to open a book you know he's, he's learned all yeah. this other stuff and you're able to isolate where learning happens it's funny you were talking about getting a thumbs up and how it's nice to get a thumbs up from them and I was thinking when you were saying that that I wondered whether you and Ismail are going to have a kind of report almost 
you know, where is you ask Ismail how he's found it, what he's learned from it. Are you going to have a kind of debrief at yeah. the end of your year? Uh, yeah, definitely. And I, I think I'm really looking forward to that because I want to summarise. I think we've done so many things. So we were in London last week. We went to a couple of the museums there and Ismail booked the tickets. He booked the hotel. Like he he planned the whole trip essentially and our food itinerary, everything was done, done by him. So that was really good. And then like, I also let him take the lead and find like the platform we were supposed to go on and, and how to find where we were supposed to be because we had the, I had my three-year-old with me as well. And I just wanted to, I acted like I was obviously busy with her, but really I wanted him to kind of take initiative. And he always, he loves doing that kind of thing anyway. So I think we've had so many great memories in this year that we've made together as as just like mother and son um, and just as a family, because we've had that opportunity to not worry about school timetables, not have to, you know, we can, we can go anywhere we want, whenever we want. And that, that's been amazing, which I'm really going to miss. You can tell probably the sound of my voice. I'm really <laughs> going to, to miss that. Um, but I think we definitely are going to have a reflection and also like a celebration, I suppose, of the, all the things we have achieved in the year. And I'm actually really, and I have to think about this sometimes, and I'm really difficult. I don't compliment myself very often, but I feel really proud of myself for being brave and doing this whole, I said brave again, but this is something that probably, I, I don't know any home educating families, as probably a lot of people wouldn't know outside of the, the home ed community that I've, I've come to know um, since starting. Um, and to do that, I, I feel like I had recognized that it's, well, it wasn't working where he was, the situation wasn't working and he needed to be taken out. And that was something that I had to do against all the advice that I received. And just doing that makes makes me feel like I am able to put my child's needs first. Um, and then I've been continuing with that throughout the year. Like I, I want to celebrate that. Not only has Ismail done this, but I've done it as well. So I want to have some sort of uh, something that we do together. We're going on holiday, actually. Maybe we'll make something of it then. We're going on holiday mid-July because we can. Um, so we're going to be going away mid-July and we probably will have a bit of a, um, definitely a reflection activity where we talk about all the different learning that we've done and summarise that. I think you're completely right that it's absolutely vital that you celebrate each other you know, and that you celebrate your role in it as well as his his journey as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I am really sad that he's going to be. Here. Well, I'm not. I don't know if I'm really sad. I think in some ways it's it's a really it's a mixed bag of emotions because in one way I feel a little bit relieved that either the pressure of it isn't going to be on me. So that I'm also I almost feel a little bit guilty about feeling that way because I think that you you know I really fought for this to happen, but it's nice to not have to worry about that in a, in a way. But then at the same time, I'm really the, the fallout from actually rejoining the the he's only been out for a year, but rejoining the school system, mainstream education again. I know that that's going to have its own challenges, especially going from primary to secondary. Um, so we're a mixed bag of emotions in the house at the moment. I think so. <laughs> we'll see how it yeah. goes. And I think it's really understandable. I think it's really understandable to have worries and anxiety and also feelings of relief. You know, I think yeah. that's that's understandable. And if, obviously, I've, I've finished home educating, you know, although officially I haven't finished because my daughter's still going to be at home for the next couple of years being home educated. So really, we haven't finished home educating. But in my mind, I've finished home educating. And so I, I, I what you say really resonates with me because there is there is all of these emotions that come through um and there is a sense of loss at the time that you've shared together but one thing i i'm really finding it that is helping me and just making me feel so positive about it is that this period of time that you have whether it's one year in your case or 15 years in my case it's it's a period of time that you would not normally get it's like bonus time with your mm. child you know and whether it is one month or 15 years it's it's a thing of joy and even if it's coming to an end not everything lasts I mean and that's one of the beautiful things about life is that the wonderful stuff and the joyous stuff is bookended you know and that's how, what makes us appreciate it I think and so I think sometimes looking back at something and being okay with it coming to an end is an essential part of honoring the journey as a whole you know yeah no absolutely I think that's right yeah I'll that was like way that was like way too way too wise for me normally I don't normally <laughs> go quite that wise I feel like I should have some sort of, <laughs> some sort of like gray beard and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know where that weird wisdom came from. No. Anyway, 
It's valuable though, isn't it? Because I think having that experience and have, being able to say that is because of all the experience and all the things that you shared with 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 everybody in your podcasts and things. So yeah, no, I absolutely, I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. So he's had a um, we're, we're having an interesting week coming up with him having his transitions, and he's uh, looking forward to it. One thing I'm worried about is that he's gotten used to having late starts in the morning. So he he's a, naturally he's a late riser. So getting back into the school rhythm of having to be up and ready by eight or before yeah that kind of time is going to be difficult for him because he does a lot of his learning and this I found this very difficult initially because my timetable started at nine o'clock and I thought that's going to be enough of a lion for him because he can just roll out of bed and basically come downstairs and start his learning um but now that doesn't happen so we're looking at often our day doesn't start with actual work and things well work or whatever getting on with things about to about 11 30 sometimes even so I think he's really going to struggle but he does perform better so he goes on later in the day so he'll be like doing things kind of dipping in and out and doing them into the evening so kind of seven eight even sometimes because he because he enjoys it if it's something that he's following and doing he likes doing that so I think that's going to be something that he's really going to struggle with I personally think he's going to struggle with the early starts and the whole com- being going from lesson to lesson to lesson without re- really having a break or, you know, being able to actually just reset and choose having that autonomy about when he does things. So that's going to be a struggle, but we'll see how that goes as well. Yeah. And actually the last podcast that I released, which was with an amazing girl called Naomi, who is home educated, and it was part of our Sharing Our Successes series. It was the last episode, actually. And she talked a little bit about that, about the limitations of the school system when it comes to timings, you know, and how the teenage brain really works a lot better with having a lie in. And yeah. instead, you're rushing around at 7.30 and, you know, you're meant to be at quarter past nine, you're meant to be, you know, focusing on calculus. And whereas most most teenagers really, I mean, both my children work much better in the afternoon, like, and we're talking late afternoon, like middle to late afternoon. And really the morning is a time for them to very slowly roll out of bed and, you know, do everything sort of on, yeah. on a go slow. It sounds to me like you're going to have to have a, a few weeks run up to school, right? Where you start yeah. slowly bringing the alarm clock earlier and earlier. That is what we've decided. Well, that's what I've decided, but he's not on board yet, but we'll have to get him on board because it's one of those things. So this is a thing. I've got to go back from being like kind of, yeah, you choose when you want to get up. That's fine as long as you get what we're doing in the day done. And as long as you're, you're you know, utilizing the day best, you're getting your walk outside, your exercise outside, as long as you're doing all those things, it's fine. We're going from that to me having to step into the more kind of authoritative parent parental role, which doesn't ever go down well anyway, but let's be honest with him. So it's good, but it's going to be a case of we need to be up at seven and we need to make sure we're having our breakfast and all these things early on. And yeah, he doesn't, he, he's, he learns much better. I like your kids, like most teenagers probably performs much better when he's had a bit of a, kind of uh, warmed up into it or, or you know had that that time in the morning to kind of get the anxieties out or do the things that he wants to do get get those sorts of things done and then sit down and settle so uh yeah but my role's gonna change again that's the thing I'm gonna have to do accept and and do for now and it's funny because yeah. quite often we have these episodes together and part of my brain thinks when you're talking thinks yeah I can't see it lasting just because you're doing such <laughs> natural home educators you know you're a natural yeah. home educator he's a natural home educated child and it's 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 working so nicely for you but I totally understand why you're giving school a go he has said he wants to try it and so you're trying and that's the whole point is that if it was the other way around and he said he wanted to try home education and and you would let him try it and so exactly like with school he said he wants to try school so you're letting him try school and you may well find and I know we've hinted at this a couple of times you may well find that just this period of home of home education has stabilized everything to the point where actually school doesn't have that kind of rough edge and those kind of pointy pointy bits that were sort of aggravating him before and that he's he's built up I don't want to say resilience but he's built up a kind of a solid foundation through the last year that we'll see him through so well thank you so much Ash it sounds like June has been an improvement on May which is good and (laughs) we will be catching up with you next month for a kind of retrospective I think to see how your year has been going perfect thanks so much thank you thanks Ash lovely to speak to you again Thank you so much for joining us for today's Home Education Matters podcast. See you at the next one. Have a lovely day.